Today we're going to talk about shotguns and they are near and dear to my heart. It's my favorite sport is uh, everything to do with shotguns. So I'm going to break it down for you so it doesn't feel overwhelming if you want to walk into a gun shop or talk shotguns with the guys. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, number one, shotguns have a different action and what that means is it's the action that operates the gun. That's all it is. So I'm going to show you a few different actions here today. These are the most common things that you're going to see when you start looking at shotguns or talking to people about them. So the first one I'm going to show you is called a break action. And it's called a break action because it opens up and the action has a break. Um, I want to backpedal a tiny bit and tell you that uh, the shotgun shell, which is the ammunition for a shotgun, in this action of a gun is just going to get loaded right into the barrel of the gun. And all my guns are unloaded, just so that you know. Um, a shotgun shell, I talked about a rifle being one single projectile, and a shotgun shell looks like this. And it's called a shotgun shell because it's full of multiple little pellets or shot and then the guns shoot those shot out. And it's um, not just one projectile, it's multiple. It's as many as they can pack into these little shells. Okay, the next action I'm gonna talk about, we talked about break action. Now another very common action on a shotgun is called a pump action, and it looks something like this. And it pumps, and thus that's why it's called that. So what happens on a pump shotgun, pump action, is the shotgun shell is loaded here or on some it's in the side and then you manually are going to pump that shell up into the firing chamber of the gun and then you are able to shoot it. Called a pump action. Another very very common action on a shotgun is called a semi-automatic and in this action the shotgun shell is going to be loaded into the chamber here on the side and then multiple shells can also be loaded through the bottom and then it is called a semi-automatic because the action on the gun is going to automatically uh, keep adding the shotgun shells as you shoot. So you can shoot, the action in the gun will load for you and you can shoot again pretty quickly so if you're in a hunting situation, you're able to get a couple shots off before those ducks fly away. So that's the idea there. Um, there's no good or bad action. They are all just different and used for different purposes. So that being said, you may have noticed that on my semi-automatic shotgun that I just showed you, this is a larger gun than this one, which is also a semi-automatic. Trying to show the sizes there. They both have the same style action, but they are two different sized guns. And that's taking us into the next topic that we're going to talk about, which is the gauge of a shotgun. So you also may have heard that there are different gauges. Uh, this larger gun that I'm holding is a 12 gauge, and the smaller gun that I'm holding is a 20 gauge. So the gauge number gets larger as the gun gets smaller. There is also a co other common gauges um, that you will hear people speak about and use. Uh, 16 gauge is a popular, and then on the bigger end, bigger than this one, is a 10 gauge. The difference in the gauge, besides the gun being a different size, also comes from the ammunition or the shotgun shell being a different size. So I'm going to hold them this way. The 12 gauge shotgun shells are most typically red unless the manufacturers get creative and have a little fun with that. And a 20 gauge shotgun shell most always is going to be this yellow or gold color. And it's definitely smaller and it holds less shot, the 20 gauge shell. The other difference being that the larger 12 gauge shotgun shell because it can hold more shot, we'll typically also get a little more distance and, and a little more penetration on whatever your target is, if you're hunting or shooting clays.
The next thing we're going to talk about, you also may have noticed the, the varying barrel lengths. So these shotguns will come, the barrel on the shotgun is this portion here. And besides being in a different gauge, you also see them in di different lengths. And every shotgun is designed by its manufacturer for a little slightly different purpose. And thus, the barrel lengths are gonna be a little bit different too. And the lengths are based on your purpose. What are you gonna do with that gun? You'll notice that this particular gun that I'm holding is full of waterfall pattern. So you can guess what this gun's been designed for. Uh, that being said, it's also a very versatile gun and I can use it on the trap range outside here at Metro or I can uh, take it pheasant hunting even though it's got waterfall all over it's going to work for a lot of different purposes. I want to buy a shotgun, Sherry. What should I get? Where do I start? I'm kind of overwhelmed by all of this. So that comes down to what do you really want to do? If you're for sure set that you're just going to do one thing then you can go after the one gun that's suited for that item. If you want a gun that you can just kind of start with and try hunting and try some trap shooting or some sporting clays and you want to do multiple disciplines with your shotgun, at that point I would recommend possibly either a semi-automatic or a pump. The first thing that I hear from a lot of people when they want to know about what should I buy is price point. So it based, it's quite based on what you are willing and able to pay for your first shotgun. So you can start out at a moderate level or um, price point uh, and go all the way up into the thousands and thousands of dollars with very fancy uh, trap and, and specialized guns. Um, but you can also start on the low end. You can start out at about $500 in that ballpark. You can get a basic pump shotgun uh, pump shotguns are great because it's it's like a manual car. You're doing the work and it'll never, um, you should never have any problems uh, having it jam or have any issues with, with anything working slow in a cold duck blind on a cold morning. So, but the other, the other downfall on it is that you're going to hear this pump sound every time you're loading your shotgun shell. Big deal to some, others don't mind. Just know that that's going to happen. And then if you are pheasant hunting, which is, it would totally work great for pheasant hunting, uh, you just have to know that every time you want to take a shot, you're going to have to pump that shotgun to take your shot. It is a great all-around gun, and you can get these in 20 gauge or 12 gauge, uh, whatever you're drawn to. It's all about personal preference. Uh, a semi-auto shotgun, something like this, or this is a Beretta. 12 gauge and this is a Beretta 20 gauge. These are a little bit higher price points. You're going to maybe get up into the eight, 900 or so price point with these. Great, great starter guns. Uh, they, they have safety and um, they're pretty multi-purpose. You don't have to get a waterfall pattern on your gun. As you can see with the 20 gauge, you can have it wood or also a lot of them come in a uh, all black, synthetic black which is really versatile for a lot of different purposes. Um, you can use semi-automatics for duck hunting, goose hunting, uh, pheasant hunting, and like I said, and everything out on the clays range. Um, clay sporting range would be trap shooting, skeet shooting, five stand, or sporting clays. They're all great games, and they're also good practice for hunting. Uh, before you go into buy a gun or even to look at the guns at the store though, a really, really important thing that you want to do is figure out your eye dominance. Uh, about 10 to 15 percent of the population are left-handed, but that does not necessarily mean that you are going to be a left eye dominant shooter. And just because you're right-handed doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a right-handed or a right eye dominant shooter. So what you want to figure out if you don't already know about yourself is what your eye dominance is because that's going to determine what gun you buy. You're going to want to shoot with your strong eye, not your strong hand. You'll have more success, you'll have more fun, and especially if you've never shot a gun much before, you're not going to have any muscle memory to overcome. 
So to figure out your eye dominance, if you have never done this before, is pick an object that's in the distance in the room that you're in. Take your hands like this. So I'm gonna stare at something off in the distance and I'm gonna bring my hands in around it. And then I'm gonna close one eye or the other to figure out which eye I'm seeing that item in the distance with. It should be fairly clear if you're looking at that with your right eye or left eye. Uh, an interesting thing to note is that for some interesting reason, women have a high percentage of being what's called cross dominant. You're a right-handed person, but you're left eye dominant. For some unusual reason, it's just high, highly probable in women. So don't force it and figure out what your eye dominance is and then you can move forward. Um, and I don't want you to make the mistake of buying a right-handed gun if you're left eye dominant or vice versa because I don't want to waste your money. So before you go shopping, figure out your eye dominance and then start thinking about what action of a shotgun you're interested in and kind of what you want to do with it. You know, what, it, what are you drawn to? Are you drawn to trying some pheasant hunting? Maybe you have somebody that you know duck hunts and you want to try that or goose hunting or you just want to start out at a clays range and get comfortable shooting your gun, which I highly recommend doing. It's a great, great way to get comfortable with your gun and shooting and ammo and understanding how it all works. The next thing I want to talk about when you want to go shopping and looking and, and you're ready to purchase a shotgun and move into this world. Um, again, back to the purpose, you want to know what you're hoping to look at. Maybe you've narrowed it down to two actions or two gauges. Uh, you can go into any gun shop in the state of Minnesota and they'd be happy to help you. Uh, they're gonna, most, most good gun shops are gonna have quite a few guns up on the shelf and then you are able to ask to see them. You can hold them, uh, check their actions, see how it works. And then what you're wanna, gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna shoulder that gun, which means in the store, and it's okay they're used to this, you're gonna wanna hold that gun up to your shoulder and cheek and see how it fits you. So fit is a huge uh, piece of this. You're gonna find a gun and it's individual for everyone. So this is the piece where you don't want anyone telling you what you want. You need to figure it out for yourself. You need to figure out what gun, you, what action you're comfortable with, and then what fits you. Because everybody is different. Uh, we all have different lengths of arms. We have all different builds. And we all have different eye dominance. So you have to take into consideration all of these things. It's important to know that most of the shotguns on the shelves at stores are going to be built for the average size man. And uh, you may have noticed that women are not shaped the same as men. So a lot of the guns that are built for the average size man don't fit the average sized woman if there is such a thing. So again, I just can't stress enough that you get, uh, get into the stores or, or friends, see what your girlfriends are shooting, ask them what they like and what they don't like. But always keep in mind that everyone's different and you may have different preferences, but learning about all the different styles of guns and what they can do and not do is super valuable information. Uh, again, let's say you're going into a store to look at guns and you're pretty sure you want to look at a, a semi-automatic um, and then you ask to look at that. I just want you to know that some guns are, are designed already out of the box to adjust to you. Some will have things you can add to the stock here that make it longer if you have long arms and uh, some don't, but they can be modified by a trained and specially trained uh, gunsmith. And the gunsmith's going to be your friend. So you, first you find the gun you like, um, and then when you're pretty sure you know what you want, then you want to ask the store, hey, do you have a gunsmith here or that you use or you recommend? And then you're going to want to take that gun to the gunsmith and have it fitted to you. And the gunsmith can modify all sorts of angles and things on this gun so that when you pull your sh shotgun up, you can go right to your cheek, shoulder, and get on your target really quickly, which is obviously the goal of hunting. We want to get up and get in there, boom, get that duck, or get that goose, or pheasant, whatever you're after, or clay target. Uh, so fit, fit, fit is, is, is very important. If you pick out a gun 
and you leave the store and you go out shooting it and you come home with a bruised cheek, um, which isn't a big deal. Uh, <laughs> Um, but uh, that's just, you need to get, get that gun in, or maybe you already have a gun and you're not sure uh, if it's the right thing for you because it's hard to shoot for you, then take it to a gunsmith and get it fit. I do want to also say that modern guns are so much later than uh, what they used to be when your dad or grandpa had a gun and you may have shot that when you were young. Uh, these new modern guns, a typical 12 gauge shotgun like this with one single barrel on it, is uh, going to weigh between seven and eight pounds. That's pretty light. And the recoil, these gun manufacturers work very, very hard to make it not kick you or have what's called recoil in the shoulder. A typical 20 gauge shotgun these days, something this size, it's going to weigh approximately six pounds right in there. Very light, very easy. Um, this little Beretta is a dream to shoot. There's no recoil. It's uh, all absorbed inside the uh, mechanisms in the action. So that's good to know. So don't be afraid of the shotguns, uh, especially these new ones. They're, they're great and designed to not, hurt, not kick you or have any felt recoil. Pretty fast side angles and you want your, your shot to have a big wide pattern so you have a better chance at hitting that target. Uh, some choke tubes, that, that trap gun that I did show, um, the choke tube sticks out the end of the barrel a little bit, and that's on purpose so you can change them out as you're out in the on the shoot, on a sporting clays course. Well, great, so, you answered uh, Rachel's question about recommendation for turkey hunting. So yeah, she she said thank you about that. Someone asked, yeah. how often should you clean your shotgun? Uh, it just depends on how often you're shooting it. Um, if you're shooting quite frequently, then obviously you want to be cleaning it pretty frequently. Um, and if you're pulling it out to shoot it once a year, uh, I would definitely clean it once you're done before it goes into your gun storage for the winter. Um, it's it's really just based on you. So you kind of think it through and uh, you can learn. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube these days on how to clean your shotgun. It's it's totally doable. You can do it all on your own. You can buy gun cleaning kits at the gun shops. Um, and if and if that intimidates you, you can always go visit that gunsmith that I mentioned in the video and and just have them clean it for you as well. Great. Another question from our another steering committee member, Nikki. Um, she asks about deer hunting with a shotgun. So parts of Minnesota are shotgun only for deer hunting, southern Minnesota. Is there a better one to go with or the most common slug size available? Right. So I don't I have personally have not deer hunted with a slug, but what she's referring to is yeah, there are portions of Minnesota where to deer hunt you cannot use a rifle. They have you using a shotgun. And instead of using a typical shotgun shell that has the shot, all the little pellets that come out of the out of the shotgun shell like this, it's what's called a slug. It's a one big single projectile that will come out and kind of function like a bullet out of a rifle. Um you would just want to make sure that your your shotgun has been designed for that purpose. So that's a good question for when you're out shopping. Um, and the barrels would typically be called rifled, a rifled barrel, which sounds complicated, but it's inside the barrel of the gun. It will have been built with a spiral pattern to uh, rifle or basically twist that uh, slug as it comes out your barrel. Uh, a good friend of mine on the bow steering committee named Rochelle uh, had recently purchased herself a shotgun that came with two barrels, one for uh, when we took it pheasant hunting in the fall, and then if she's going to go deer hunting with it, uh, she can change the barrel of the gun, and it's designed to shoot a slug. Uh, it's just a question for when you're out shopping. If that's, if that's on your mind as one of your purposes for your shotgun, then ask the store, uh, the salespeople, about that to make sure that what you purchase will work for that. Hey, Rebecca asked, have you had most of your guns custom fitted to you? Um, yes. <laughs> um, so let's see, when I first started, the answer would have been no. Um, I had a gun that was uh, not necessarily fitted to me and then I was 
able to take a duck hunting, but I was really struggling uh, with it on the trap range. And that's when I really started learning a lot more about gun fit. So then as I went forward, then yes, um, there are, the gunsmiths are awesome and they do this gun fitting all the time. They're the, the best person to talk to about it. There's also videos that you can, again, look up on YouTube. Um, it's, it's dependent on you. It's dependent on the length of your arm and the distance between your shoulder and your cheek. And then I'm gonna show you a visual here. Every gun's got, if you can see that in the video, this rise here. So when you put your cheek on the stock of the gun, you have to be able to see up and over that rise. And so there's an angle that can be adjusted in here to lift or lower. This is called the comb on your gun. And you wanna be able to put your cheek on the stock and see up and over this rise here. And so that's important. So sometimes you're able to modify that yourself. Um, some guns come with an adjustable comb height and you can figure that out on your own. Uh, some don't, and then you wanna have your gunsmith help you because they, that's what they do. They can adjust that for you and it's really easy for them and it seems sometimes complicated to us. So the, the, the next question um, uh, is from Michael. He lives in the Metro and has found it difficult to find a gunsmith. Um, mm -hmm. that knows how to fit his 12 gauge Beretta um, A400 kickoff shotgun. Uh, any suggestions or? Yes, go to Joe's Sporting Goods. I'm not I'm pumping them, but Joe's Sporting Goods has a gunsmith in store. His name is Tim Probst and he's a wonderful person and he will, I'm sure would love to help you fit that gun. And Joe's Sporting Goods is in St. Paul, is that correct? Correct, yes, St. Paul, Minnesota, right off Highway 36. Okay, uh, somebody else answered that with the same recommendation. So that's two recommendations yeah. for Joe's. I don't yeah. see any other questions coming in. Anything else that you'd like to? I get, I get uh, one in the chat, Linda. Oh, okay. Um, somebody is asking about effective range in, of the different gauges of shotguns. What is the uh -huh. effective range of the different gauge of shotguns? That's a great question. Uh, I, I hate to tell you this, but it's sort of a complicated answer. Uh, because there's so many factors, it's um, going to, of course, be based on the gauge of the gun, and it's also going to be based on the ammunition that you're using. Uh, if you're going to go turkey hunting, I'll just come back to that because it's spring and a lot of people are thinking turkey hunting right now. Uh, I would, a 12 gauge for the most part is going to have uh, more distance, more effective range. Um, and then you're going to add a full choke to that, which again is going to add to your distance and effective range. And then also the ammunition that is made by the manufacturers these days for turkey hunting is just crazy good. It's phenomenal. They use uh, all sorts of non-toxic shot that is incredible with its distance and speed and effectiveness. Um, but then that being said, I can use my same, same 12 gauge shotgun, change out the choke and put in a trap load, which is a real light load. Um, and then the distance is, isn't so, so much. I, how do you say that? This shorter distance. Um, but and then you can still also be really effective with a 20 gauge shotgun. Again, if if you work in the right chokes and you're using specialized ammunition, you can be pretty effective with that 20 gauge as well. So it's kind of a complicated answer. I'm sorry about that. Okay, the next question is uh, any tips for left handers, the right eye dominant? Yeah. Exactly. Um, again, I can't stress enough. Go with your strong eye, not your strong hand. Um, and I know lots of ladies that we've worked with at the at our DNR bow programs that have come across this, whether we were learning to archery hunt or we were doing guns. Um, you will have more, much more success if you go with a gun that matches your strong eye um, and then in this particular situation, Linda, did they say they're left-handed, right? Left-handed, so but she's, right eye? She's uh, left-handed, but right eye dominant. Then you're gonna wanna shoot a right-handed gun, which might feel weird to you holding it. Um, that's kind of the opposite problem that I've I've come into with some of my friends, but um, yeah, you can get, it, it would be easier to find a right-handed gun for sure and get it fit to you and then just uh, start off slow in a safe place where you can shoot that. You know, if, if somebody has the wrong dominant gun, 
-hmm. there tips to still use that same gun and be more successful? Like, you know, uh, putting Vaseline on a shooting glass of the non-dominant mm -hmm. eye or? You can, you can do those things. Um, and there's different uh, oh, theories out there on all of that. Um, if you're, if you're shooting with your dominant eye, you shouldn't have to worry about doing too much with your non-dominant eye because your dominant eye is going to take over anyway. So as long as you have that gun lined up and shouldered to your dominant eye, it's the stronger, it's the stronger one. It's going to take over for you. So okay. um, somebody asked, does eye dominance ever change with age? I don't know. Those are I've medical questions. That, but I think that would be pretty rare unless there was something that happened medically, maybe with your eyes. Okay. Yep, I, I agree. It seems like you'd stay the same, but um, let's see. I'm just looking. I saw one other one in the chat, Linda. Okay. On the preferred gauge for grouse. Oh. And I also just put in the in the Q&A too that my eye dominance did change. Did it? I think about 20 years ago. Oh. And everything, I was right eye dominant for a long time until about uh, seven, eight years ago. My my left eyes were getting stronger. My right eyes getting a little bit weaker. So, did you switch shooting? I did not. So I I put tape in the lens of my glasses if I have to, or yeah. or I close an eye. Right, that would be because I already have guns. Yes, right. <laughs> You've already invested. Which brings up besides besides the gauge for grouse is is cost in di different types of guns. So absolutely, um, gauge for grouse. Um, it's a smaller bird, and you're going to be in the woods, uh, and you're going to be in close quarters in there. So you, you could shoot you could shoot any gauge you want to. You just maybe would want to have a gun that's maybe got a shorter barrel. Um, the barrel lengths change. I, I did mention on uh, touch on that in the video. So um, if you're swinging in the woods for grouse, maybe a 26 or even a 24 inch barrel would be nice uh, if if you have enough to have different guns for different things that you're doing. Um, uh, when you're doing something like duck or goose hunting, then it's advantageous to have a longer barrel. Um, and then. Uh, Let's see, Benji, what was the other one on that one? I think it was about cost. Oh, Different. Cost. Yeah, cost. Um, gosh, it's so all over the place. You can start out with basic a basic pump. It's going to be probably your least expensive gun to get a good solid gun. And maybe plan on spending at least five or five hundred dollars if you can on that. Um, if you're drawn to a semi-automatic, you're going to look at spending a little bit more and it's worth it. Guns is definitely one of those areas where you're going to get what you pay for. If you can afford a couple hundred dollars more, you're just going to get that much more solid and reliable of a gun. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's very personal and what you can afford and what you're able to do. And, um, but uh, yeah, starts at five semi-autos. A good semi-auto, you're going to start getting up into seven, eight hundred, uh, depending on what you're finding out there. They're kind of hard to come by right now. All the stores are a little bit lower on inventory. Crazy times. So a couple more questions, then we'll end. Um, a recommendation for a teenager that is new to shotguns. Possible uses are trap shooting and then possible bird hunting. You mentioned your own experience of starting with a 20 gauge and later switching to a 12 gauge. So any recommendations for a teenager? Yeah. They'll probably grow. They're gonna grow. So yeah, I guess it would depend on the size of this teenager and this, you know, we don't know, is this a girl or boy, um, what their comfort level is. Uh, maybe show them this video if possible and uh, and then talk about the different actions and see what what that what that shooter what that teenager is interested in or drawn to um there's no right or wrong answer you can start with the 20 gauge you don't have to um it's just there's so much personal preference and and don't feel like you have to start with the 20 gauge either um if they maybe are going to get into the high school trap team a lot of those kids will be moving to 12 gauges if they haven't already started with one so um you can also, if if that's a piece of this, you could always reach out to the high school trap coach 
and see if they're going to be doing the instructing, if they have a preference on what your person is shooting. And get your firearm safety certificate. <laughs> right, right. That's, you, um, you also had a recommendation about field days. Can you explain what field? I know it's not required anymore to do a in person field day, but what's your recommendation on field day, especially for new shooters? If you can go to one, I'd go to one. Just get on the website, on the DNR website. There's a list of all the classes and where they're going to have those. What that is, is the, the coursework is a, a lot. You can do course, you can do the course in live in person, but you can do it all online, the whole course, and then go to a field day. Uh, it's worth its weight in gold for even for anyone who's not going to hunt, just somebody who's going to have guns in their home. Uh, they give you the opportunity to, um, simulate different situations where you're going to have guns and handle guns. And how do you handle crossing a fence? How do you go through a gate? How do you get up into a deer stand? If you're going to do some deer hunting with a slug rifle, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of good, good experience with very well-trained instructors will be there to help and answer questions. Great. You know, there's two more questions came in. I'll, I'll start the first one. Uh, Mary said, if you've never shot a gun, of any kind, where is the best place to learn to shoot a gun? I know the bow program offers <laughs> gun classes. <laughs> but, yeah. um, and we work with quite a few uh, groups, so like Wings North, we do quite a few gun classes up there in the Metro Gun Club. So any suggestions for a new person who just wants to try shotguns? Um, yeah, if, you, if you're not sure that you're ready to buy, uh, just start talking to some people, see who's got guns and, um, and you can message out to the folks here at, on the bow program. And um, if you, you know, if you can't find anybody else that has one, friends, family, relatives, uh, just get somebody to meet you somewhere. And, and there's a lot of public uh, gun clubs in the Twin Cities and all over the state of Minnesota, or even out on some private land uh, and get to handle a gun if you can. And uh, yeah, just try shooting them. Uh, Metro Gun Club is is a great safe environment to go. Talk to some folks there too. Great, and so Sherry is an instructor for us as well. So when the bow program goes back in person with uh, in person programming, we do offer uh, shotgun classes, so you can try it without having to purchase. Um, I think I'll do one more question here, and then we're going to end. Um, so back to the left-handed right eye dominant question. I've been using a pump action, but would like to try a semi-auto. If mm -hmm. I go with a right-handed gun, um, can the gunsmith modify the component safety, et cetera? Well, if you're right, if you're right eye dominant, you're gonna shoot a right-handed gun like a right-handed person would. So you wouldn't need to modify that gun other than just to have it fit for you when you're at that point. If you are a left eye dominant person, which this happens, I think, with a lot of gals who are right handed, they might be left eye dominant. So they're going to want to get a left handed gun and shoot like a left handed person so that their left eye is in charge of that. Uh, so if you're able to find the right gun, you wouldn't really have to modify. Okay, great. Well, oh, Sherry, oh. that was all the questions. I know that left eye, right eye dominance is mm -hmm. important. My son, we always thought he was right. He's right handed. Thought he was right eye dominant and a CEO handed him a gun one day and he went right to his left eye. So you got to purchase that gun that's according to your eye dominance. Yes. Yeah. Um, so anyway, thank you very much. Sherry is a volunteer for the program. She does this um, because she wants other women and families to learn how to do these skills. And I want to thank Sherry for her time today. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. I will again meet next Wednesday for another Minnesota Outdoor Skills and Stewardship um, webinar. So thank you, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>